Welcome to Live at Lunch. I'm your host today, David V, here on KRFC 88.9 FM's Live at Lunch. Today's special guest is Crispy Watkins. When you see the sun I'll be the one that holds you When you see the sun I'll be the one that knows you It's always open Chew plantain Pack it in Something's broken And I need a helping hand Come on now
fire keeping me alive. Crispy Watkins here on KRFC's Live at Lunch with a little assistance on the cello from Daniel Zamzow. How are you guys doing today? Hey, good. Thanks for having us, David. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Glad to be here. Excellent. I'm going to start right off by asking the question that everybody wants to know. Where did the moniker Crispy come from? Well, I was at a retreat center in North Carolina. This is where I was going to record my first album, and different groups would come up for retreats. And I actually got that name from a little three-year-old kid who just decided my name was Crispy <laughs> and would shout it out whenever I entered the dining hall and run over and attach himself to my leg. And everyone I was working with thought that was so funny. They said, you, know, you should just call yourself Crispy Watkins. That should be the name on your album. I thought, you know what, you're right. And it's stuck ever since. Well, and it's unique. You, you, you don't hear it from a lot of other artists. So that's, that's a wonderful story about that. Speaking of that album, um, you came to record a, your album in the, the hills, the mountains of North Carolina at the time. Well, that's an interesting story. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I was actually doing um, kind of a young adult residency program at this retreat center that I've been going to for years in various capacities, summer camps and things. It's called The Mountain. It's a wonderful place. And part of a residency was uh, we were asked to do a creative project. And I had all my equipment with me, and there's just this beautiful tower on the top of the mountain where you go up and watch the sunset, and there's a few rooms inside of it. So Is I that just like set a fire tower or something in the it's, you're kind of the in the vein service? of a fire tower, yeah. I don't, don't know if this one was ever used for that purpose, but it's like a sightseeing a wooden tower with stairs on the, around the outside. Sure. Yeah. I can picture it now. Yeah. So it was a beautiful spot to do it. You know, it's a lo-fi recording, but it was just perfect for what I wanted. Excellent. And you were originally from the hills around Knoxville yeah. and East Tennessee. East Tennessee, yeah, Appalachian. Uh, that, that feels like kind of my, my lifeblood is, is Appalachia and uh, uh, grew up on a lot of that music and camping in the Smokies. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm happy when I can see mountains, any kind of mountains, uh, but I do just love the green hills that are out that way. For folks like us that haven't spent a lot of time in that area of Tennessee, what was the radio like? What was the music and the influences like growing up? I mean, obviously, if you're on the East Coast, you're listening to a different style of music than the West Coast usually. Mm -hmm. Tennessee's got a pretty unique style of music. I'm just curious what you listened to growing up. Yeah. You know, besides kind of the regular top 40 stations, which were always out there, I really got into a local radio station, WDVX, um, and they play a lot of bluegrass, a lot of uh, kind of old-timey music and uh, Delta blues and things that you might expect, you know, or influences that are uh, living in, in Tennessee. Um, and that really helped get me into a lot of that old rootsy music. And they had actually a similar thing going on with these lunchtime performances that we would go and, and hang out at noontime. And uh, it's definitely formative for me. So speaking of formative, right off the bat, that's what grabbed you? Or growing up, were you, were you playing in rock bands and you were playing speed metal? Or what was, what was the influences when you first started playing? Yeah, you know, I didn't really pick up guitar until I was 16. Um, and I had gone through some phases with some harder music, but, you know, by that point, uh, I was maybe just exiting a, a, a smash mouth interest and, uh, <laughs> was, um, also into like the Dixie Chicks. It was just, you know, was kind of a sweet spot sometimes. Um, and I got really into, uh, first doing some Coldplay songs and then it really sunk deep into Bob Dylan and kind of left a lot of the other stuff behind and, Went on a big Bob Dylan kick for many years. Speak to many, many singer-songwriters. <laughs> yeah. That's what grabbed the them. The exactly. Bob the Bob Dylan you kick. Have one. It's like Be Beatlemania, Bob Dylan kick. Oh, and the yeah. Beatles were right there for Getting sure. They stung were part by of Sting. That's <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit more of here. Well, let's. Uh, that was uh, Plantain you opened up with and uh, Fire in the House. I do want to touch base on Plantain. Most people think of it as the cooking 
banana, but that's not at all what it is. Why don't you explain real quick what plantain is about? That's right. Yeah, I'm I'm really into incorporating some like herbal medicine and herbal concepts into songs lately. And so plantain is actually um, an herb that grows right around here. It's a weed you find in the fields if you go to our parks in Fort Collins. And it's really effective at stopping bleeding. So it's something you can kind of pack wounds with um, if you're in need of that. And it has some other medicinal properties, too. So it's kind of a fun one to just learn to identify as you're around town. I thought that was important because when you're talking about packing a wound, I, we don't want people to think you're packing banana into a wound there. So. That's true. That's not okay. recommended. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to play In the Hills for us next? That's right, In the Hills. All right. Crispy Watkins. Live my life in a junkyard Feeding off the scraps of helping hands I believe that kindness is not far Seems I've had all I can stand I was raided in the solace of the nighttime Naked and trembling in fear There's nothing to keep me in my right mind Headed for the hills, my dear In the hills, in the hills of my home In the hills, in the hills of my home Lurking in dark hollers I find I am not alone Oh Searching for her Yeah, I guess I was running from my pain Now it's caught me in a corner And I am praying for rain In the hills, in the hills of my home In the hills, in the hills of my home Lurking in dark colors I find by the fire the elders are warning of lightning and we are all fueled by desire sometimes there's no hope inside me like a light has gone out the lady of the water is rising saying come on and lay your burdens down in the Oh, <laughs> 
Crispy Watkins here on right. KRFC's Live at Lunch. I'm going to speak with Daniel Zamzo just a little sure. bit here. How are you doing, Danny? Hey, David, All right. how are you? Great. Uh, you uh, obviously uh, play with multiple artists in the past, and I'm, I'm assuming now, too. And uh, it's nice to see you here with Crispy yeah. and and uh, doing a, a fine job here on a duo today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you originally from? I'm from Iowa. What part? Uh, Eastern Iowa, Cedar Rapids oh. region. I have yeah. been there. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful waterfall right through the middle of town, right? Uh, ain't that the Springs of Colorado? Cedar Falls. Uh, Cedar Falls. There yeah, we go. That'd be it. Yep. That's right. <laughs> I went to All college right. there and then moved up to the Twin Cities after I uh, got enough of Iowa. Minnesota? That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And then what brought you into Colorado? Man, I, I was just called out here and I just came out here, packed up my car and left Minnesota. With a little bit of warning and participate in a um, band, or oh, um, I just I, I had the opportunity to to live for for no rent out here. That's and always a good motivation. I had a big opening in in my working life, and I said I'm going to take a take some time and go out to Colorado, and it stuck. So now, that, that was five years ago, five and a, a half. Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize that it's only been five years that you've been here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah I'm pretty green for, for Colorado. Now, we get a lot of full-string bass people, but not that many cello players. What what motivated you to get into playing the cello? I could I could uh, play a bowed instrument and sit down. That and was honestly car. honestly what did it for me <laughs> when I was a kid. So I want to sit down, and I like that bigger one over there when so, they had us all trying on fiddles. Right, and uh, I liked it, but I uh, said I wanted to try. I want to try the big the big fiddle. So you started in high school, fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I started taking lessons in a group. There was mm-hmm. one teacher and three or four of us cello play beginning cello players, and from there I started doing private lessons and participating in orchestras. There was a really good, uh, robust music uh, education scene in Cedar Rapids where there was a symphony school and uh, outlets to play if you had a, a classical instrument. Wow. Yeah. And so you stayed with that motivation of playing that? Yeah, for the most part. I ended up going to college and studying cello. And it really honestly opened up for me after I moved to the Twin Cities and, and I began to play with uh, bands and songwriters and began to improvise rather than just read music from a page. Then I really f- uh, f- found a, a deeper love for, for making music. Always loved listening and being part of music, but really, really opened up and woke up when when I started playing uh, what I wanted to play. And speaking of what you wanted to play, since fourth grade, cello, what kind of music were you listening to at an early age? I was into, I was into rock and roll at the time. Or do you call it rock and roll? Punk rock. Seriously? Green Day was, was really big for me in the, in the mid-90s. I started from there listening to... Uh, funk rock, you know, Chili Peppers, and not a lot of cello uh, in either of those, though. No, no. So yeah, I, I was really turned on by by uh, rock rock music, you could say, and uh, cello was always isolated to the the reading, the composed music realm for me until. I started playing with rock and rollers. So no electric light orchestra or yeah, anything not, like that with all no, the cellos. Not initially. And- <laughs> okay, that's interesting to know. Hmm. All right, well, you know, I'm uh, going to get back into the music here just a little bit. You guys are going to play uh, Roll On and Tend This Flame. Yeah. And uh, are those uh, from some newer work that you've been doing? Uh, these two are on our album, uh, which is on Spotify and all the major channels, and it's called Tend This Flame. So you'll hear kind of a, a big full band sound on there, and uh, they're ones that have been been with me for a little while and uh, still just feel really fresh. And speaking of Spotify, uh, what's the best place for people to go to check out your music, uh, check out upcoming shows, things like that? Yeah, it's great to check out crispywatkins.com, and you can hear all my music on there, and I'm working on getting my shows up there too. Uh, And also I, I like to post on Instagram and Facebook both of those, my handle is just Crispy Watkins. With a C. Yes, C-R-I-S-P-Y. All right. Mm-hmm. 
All right, here's a little roll on.
is our health When murder is our wealth What mates to heal a soul Oh, oh my love, it's time to know The flag that makes me white Takes brown and black lives Where must my privilege go? Oh, oh my love, it's time to know This chain, roll the clouds and make it rain. What anchor must I hold? Oh, oh my love, it's time to know. Crispy Watkins here on KRFC's Live at Lunch. And I'd like to take just a second to remind everybody that all of our shows obviously are taped and they go on our KRFC Radio Vision YouTube channel. And you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free. And when you do, you receive a notification every week of what artist is coming up. And you have access to all the wonderful videos that we've been doing with the Live at Lunch artists. Please do that. It, uh, it helps us as well as the musicians. Crispy, I was going to ask you, ask you a quick question here. Um, you know, you, you did some work with a full band in the past, Crispy uh, Watkins and the Crack Willows. And I hate to pigeonhole, but, it, you know, it was more of a, almost a jug band sound, whereas you've kind of taken a new direction in 2023, and it's kind of a mix of, of rock and traditional. Uh, what brought that about? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've always loved the, the jug band and the string band music, and that's been a, a home for me. Um, but I found some opportunities during the pandemic just to branch out creatively. Um, and I did a lot of just home recording and experimenting with different sounds. Just you? Uh, just me, mm-hmm. yeah. Just me for, for a couple of years, just kind of at home doing my thing. Um, and... I found a desire to add some sounds into my live performance. So I've been kind of cultivating that and feeling inspired by new artists that I meet. And uh, I feel like every every artist that I meet and encounter just has a little influence on me and shifts kind of, oh, I want to I wanna try out a little bit of this sound <laughs> or that sound. And so, I'm yeah, I'm liking this new space that I'm in. Are you here in Fort Collins? I am. I'm, I'm based right here. been here uh, since... 2014, yeah. And I failed to ask you, what brought you from Tennessee to Colorado? I moved out for love. I uh, I met a woman who already lived here in Fort Collins, and now we're married and have two kids, and it's been a good place to be. All right. So that was the motivation. That was it. Now, yeah. did Colorado music influence you at all? Jam bands, bluegrass? Oh, oh yeah, I would say so. You know, I I spend time going out to 
live shows and just I was you know a little bit a little bit into the the jam band music and have uh, had a chance to uh, experience some of what this town has to offer and I love uh, I feel like bluegrass has been really big out here and just really enjoying that scene as well um, and I've always enjoyed being a part of Foco MX because I feel like I'm constantly being influenced by and exposed uh, local to local artists lots like, of wow. different genres yes yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, that's the good thing about Fort Collins. So obviously lots of support from uh, the people who are out there and the musicians. You're working on new music? Working on some new tunes, yeah. I've got kind of a, a new uh, set who, that I'm hoping to record this summer and uh, share some music out in the world. It's been a little while now. Going to go outside for a studio or are you going to do that DIY at home? Uh, with my with help of my buddy Danny, I'm hoping to do it uh, more DIY style. Yeah, I did a studio album last time, and I learned a lot. And now I, I want to take some of these learnings and just kind of craft something homegrown. All right. And before I forget, you do have some great shows coming up here. If people would like to see you guys perform live, it looks like Friday, March 17th at uh, Wolverine Farm in Fort Collins, uh, a folk night. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> about three different artists who each play about a 30-minute set, and it's just a nice community event celebrating folk music, especially that folk music that just feels really rooted in you know, the traditions um, of you know, where we're from. So there might be a little bit of Celtic influence and just different influences, but finding a way to just celebrate, like, hey, we're here playing really good acoustic tunes is what it's all about. And you've got a uh, house party, house show, May 4th, uh, and that's part of Cottonwood Concerts, Mm -hmm. and that is open to the public, even though it's a house show. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cottonwood Concerts has, well, I assume, an Instagram. Is that the best place to go check that out? Instagram's the best place. They post their shows on there, and uh, you can get in touch with the organizer that way to find out more details and how to to get in. That's excellent. All right. It looks like Honey is the next tune? That's right. Tell That's us a little right. bit about it. Oh, this is, uh, this is kind of a tune about sinking into the natural world. And um, uh, it's, for me, uh, kind of a touching into just the spiritual awakening of, I'm not just this limited body. I'm, all, I'm also part of the, the greater landscape. Uh, so, I, yeah, I hope that people receive that invitation to... You know, that feeling you get when you go out on a hike or are growing vegetables in your garden and feel like, oh, yeah, there's this whole big world out here and humans are just a small part of it. Crispy Watkins.
And I felt the breeze from behind He kissed me softly And in my ear Said you must be queer to be alive And I still don't know If I am a rainbow A howling storm or a firefly turns me on to disappear like I was never here there's honey in the rock Crispy Watkins here on KRFC's Live at Lunch. Crispy, I want to ask you a little bit about your guitar. It's an interesting guitar, pretty unique. A lot of people watching today probably have some questions about it. Where, where's it from? Yeah, it's uh, from Ireland, actually. It's called Emerald uh, Guitars, a company. And it's made of carbon fiber, so a little bit different than our your typical wood guitar. Um, carbon fiber's kind of a very strong, hollow um and lightweight material, but it does have a walnut top, so you have some of that nice the tone uh, from a, um, a wood instrument. And it's been a delight to play. It's it's kind of a fun one to to plug in and and make some make some sounds with. For people who may or may not be able to see it on camera, there's an interesting uh, sound hole at the top where there's not usually a sound hole on a guitar. That's right. They uh, they move the sound hole, which is nice for the player because the sound comes more to my ear than just out to the world. Um, so I get some nice rich tones from it. Where did you find out about that? Uh, just I've never seen one here in the studios before. I ended up finding other carbon guitars here in town and getting curious about them. So I did some research online and. Emerald is very active on posting videos and things about their guitars. So I followed them for a while until I saw a, a used one pop up for sale on, on the internet. I'm like, oh, that's my cue. Are you finding that it has a different tone than a, a wood guitar? It does feel a little different and maybe not quite as warm. But I find when you kind of plug it in and get it get it amplified, it's really just a nice, rich full tone at that point. Excellent. So um, I know that you are working on the new album. What what motivates you to write music? What uh, is life experiences? Uh, I, I know that you're really into, you know, e ecological devotion and, you know, personal emotion. Tell us a little bit about the songwriting process. Yeah, I would say a lot of my songs do end up starting as an emotion and I go into the, the feeling. Um, songwriting for me is a great way to kind of express, understand what I'm feeling, and then contain it, kind of contain it in this song so it's not uh, you know, something that I'm carrying around on my back anymore, but it's got a nice package around it. Um, and if, I feel like it's something that I have to do. It's, it's like a compulsion. Uh, oh, I hear this melody. <laughs> I hear these, these words, and I have to get it out. That's the motivation for a lot of songwriters, isn't it? <laughs> I think there so. you go. Well, before we go any further, I want to make sure and thank uh, our uh, audio team, Andy House and uh, Matt Mosher today, and our excellent video team of Eric Delano and Jeremy Smith, who always do a fantastic job. Thank you guys, as always. You do a wonderful job, and we couldn't do it without you. Well, Crispy, we've got uh, we've got about uh, twelve. 13 minutes, I think, left, and I know that you want to do uh, Crispy's Gospel and Rise Up, mm -hmm. and uh, is there anything that you'd like to add today that maybe we didn't touch base on? 
I'm just so grateful to be here and for this opportunity. So thank you so much, Kara. You're doing a fantastic job. Well, um, and a special note before we finish today, Daniel Zamzow is a fairly new father, and uh, Baby is here with him this afternoon in the studios. And uh, (laughs) and what's your son's name? Jasper J. Jasper J., who likes the microphone. Either he's going to be a lead vocalist or a mandolinist or somebody. Drummer. 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 There you go. So far, it looks like a drummer. He does does seem to like that microphone. But since we don't have a a, a special uh, uh, nanny or babysitter here this afternoon, Daniel is going to take Jasper, and Crispy is going to finish up the show today with his last two songs.
Thank you for listening to Live at Lunch, and thank you to the Music District here in the heart of Fort Collins, Colorado.
Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker studio. If you'd like to appear on Live at Lunch, email our music director, David Vosick, at david at krfcfm.org.